videos, this is definitely Casey's forte. He is the one that handles all of our building stuff. He handles permits and processes and contracting. He's so good at the equipment side of it where my stuff is more of just kind of the processes of running the company. So um, I'm gonna hand it over to Casey <laughs> and he'll do most of the talking today and I'll try to be an excellent one-handed filmer for you guys. So um, maybe let's start with the type of structure, like whether it's the building, the truck, the trailer, why, yeah. all you, that. I think primarily like most of our questions are coming with coffee trucks and coffee trailers. How big do you need? Um, that's going to depend a lot on you, um, and what you know, what you're, what you're wanting to fit in it. Obviously, um, refrigerators, espresso machines, uh, freezers, ice, maker. ice makers, point of sale, storage, oh, storage, blenders. I mean, everything takes up so much space, and so uh, I rarely find people that regret going bigger but they always regret if they go too small so um, you know I think I think you know for us in a perfect world we would be looking at like a 20 to 24 foot trailer if we you know if we were gonna be doing it which we did look into this greatly and we haven't completely um, not you know we haven't completely decided not to, to go this route for for our future uh, to have something that we could take to events and things like that um, it just gets very, very difficult when it comes to storage, electricity. Um, it's just tough. It's just a really tough thing to, to make work. And people do it all the time, um, but there's a lot of compromising that goes on. So, for example, um, we made a post on our Instagram today, uh, the Funtrepreneur's Instagram page. If you haven't checked it out, make sure you do. Uh, we post a lot of good info on there, uh, but I was talking about mostly about the electricity today for food trucks and food tra or uh, coffee trucks and coffee trailers. Um, what a lot of people do is they they get away with uh, only needing a I say only it's about a five thousand dollar generator. Um, it's a it's a it's a Honda seven thousand. That's that's probably the most common generator used for for the coffee truck or coffee trailer business um, they're very heavy they're almost 300 pounds they are on wheels however if you're looking to like load this into the back of a pickup or something like that it would definitely take two or three people to do that uh, so that is something to keep in mind um, they run it was a five gallon tank um, it does run for about six hours if you're if you're really working it hard um, which for that part most people that's not a problem where the problem comes is how many amps that generator can support, which is which is around 50 amps. So our espresso machine in our coffee shop is a three group head. Um, it pulls 30 amps by itself. Um, yes, there are smaller espresso machines. Like you could get a one group that's 110 volt versus a 220 volt. Um, it does pull significantly less amps. However, you can make significantly less drinks with it. Um, with one single group head, you know, like with our drinks, our 24 ounce drink comes with four shots. And each time you pull a set of shots, that's two. So, you know, if you have three or four people that are wanting drinks uh, and you only have one group head, you're gonna be sitting there working that machine to death. And a lot of machines have to have time to recover, meaning they have to have time to reheat the water for your steam and your uh, espresso uh, water and the boilers. So La Marzocco does a really good job. They have a dual boiler system, which makes that system better and quicker. However, um, you need to make sure that you do have a commercial machine uh, to, to make coffee in for sure. So kind of going back to like the space is that you need to ask yourself, how many customers are we ideally trying to serve? Is this something like where for us with our coffee shop, we wanted it to be a drive up. We wanted to be serving as many customers as possible on two sides. So for us, like recovery time was huge because we knew we wanted to be averaging ideally around a minute or two per customer, which we do. We average around a minute 30 per customer per transaction. Um, and so we needed to be able to create drinks quickly also drinks that tasted fantastic and were 
all goes like you're talking about like the size of the building that you're looking for or the size of the trailer or the size of the the truck that you want to do it all depends on how many drinks are you wanting to produce in that space and then also how many items are you wanting to be able to sell are you wanting to do blended drinks where you need a blender are you wanting to do ice drinks where you need an ice maker or a cooler full of ice are you wanting to you know just serve a few hot drinks or do you need to produce as many drinks as we're producing and then that will determine what size of building or again truck or trailer that you need to be able to produce that kind of items. How much staff are you wanting to have in your building? Our first building was 10 foot by 10 foot and it was tight with staff. Like we, the most we could really fit in there was four people. Now we have a 12 by 22, but we have a bathroom and a storage room. So it's essentially still 10 by 10. And we occasionally will run a staff of five, but we have found that we literally have to put people in a zone and they cannot leave their zone or else we start running into each other. And still to this day my mom was laughing she goes one of the most common things I hear at our airbase shop is excuse me oh excuse me I'm sorry excuse me because we're running into each other all the time no matter what so side tangent on just how like what you're talking about kind of also equates to size yeah a lot of there yeah I mean it, they go hand in hand right the, the more you want to serve your customers the more space you're going to need um, Kind of going back to the power thing a little bit with a with an espresso machine that you know even if you find a two group machine that, let's say it pulls 15 amps um you know now you've got 35 amps left to play with and if you want you know a lot of places a lot of states or cities are going to require that you have a water heater right to, to make sure you have hot water to do dishes and things like that most likely that will be electric um, if you want to have an ice maker those can take 10 to 20 amps easily. Um, if you want to have a, a toaster, if you want to toast bagels or anything like that, your lights on your building, um, you need to have a pump that pumps the water for your sink. So when you turn on your faucet, you know, similar to like a camp trailer, uh, you, you turn on your faucet and the water has pressure from your water pump from the tank. Same to your espresso machine. Your espresso machine is going to need pressure coming to it um, that simulates like your city water pressure or if you're on a well, your well water pressure. So um, all of these things take a lot of power and they all add up really quick. So a mistake that people make is they go out and buy all the equipment, they go out and buy all the stuff and then they, they put it in and then they say, oh, now we need to get the generator. And then they quickly realize all of their stuff can't be supported on the generator. We don't want you guys to make that mistake. And a lot of places that offer electricity, like for you to plug in, like uh, when you go to like an RV park and they have campers or uh, camp trailer spots with, with power available, a lot of those don't offer um, any more than 50 amps of power. So you really just have to be careful with what, what you're going for um, in, in sense of power. Uh, then it comes to water. Uh, water tanks, things like that are, uh, a bit tricky depending on where you're gonna put them are you gonna take them and dump them every night uh, are they underneath like they would be in a, in a camper or a motorhome like built into the trailer yeah, yeah. Or are you gonna like haul five gallon buckets uh, people stuff. have a lot of questions about about the water system um, and yeah. I love to share like you know famous things that we always say we only can share what we've experienced um, but we try to share with you guys so that Hopefully we help you through your headache of learning process because no one helped us when we started our shops. Um, so what we did for ours is we had portable gray water tanks. And so underneath each section we had like our sink, we had our espresso machine, um, we had a separate one for a rinser that we used to clean off like our blender pitchers and stuff like that. Every one of those had its own gray water tank. And so what would happen is, you know, they would fill at different times depending on how often we used that one thing. For instance, the hand sink filled up quite quickly because we washed our hands. Um, the dish, like the dishwashing station, that one also filled up quite quickly because we washed our blenders and our pitchers and stuff. 
fast as you can, you wouldn't necessarily remember to think to check the gray water tanks. And before you know it, they're overflowing in the cabinets. Um, I have horrible memories of smiling at customers and acting like everything was fine where I'm standing in nasty gray water because I forgot to check the tanks. Um, and then that ruined our cabinetry, so we ended up having the warped cabinetry. It was not fun. So, um, <laughs> I mean, ideally, I think in a perfect world, we would have built in a bigger gray water tank system and then um, had someone, there's companies out there that will come and dump gray water tanks for you. Obviously, it's an added expense where we were just going and dumping them for free at our own RV park, but you can have someone come pump it out and build in a bigger system versus our little five gallon buckets in each station. Um, it also made it so that we couldn't leave the shop really without coordinating someone to go dump our tanks for us. We had a large freshwater tank. You guessed, I think, 250 gallons. It was big. It was really big. I could easily like, I could easily have gotten inside of it. It was yeah, like, yeah, probably, it was way bigger than you. It was probably nine. It was probably about nine, ten, nine or ten feet tall, and it was. It was round. It was like yeah. a cylinder. It was big. It, it was, was really big. We really actually big. bought it from a company that specializes in making tanks like that. And it was specially made for fresh drinking water or like edible water. Yeah. You have um, to make sure your the plastic that they use or whatever material that it's water safe or food safe. Yep. Um, which we did. And it wasn't, it was pretty affordable. I remember it actually was very affordable for the tank that we needed. But it um, wasn't movable. No, once we put it in, and we joke that if you look at really old pictures of our coffee shop, it looked like we had an outhouse off the back, um, but it wasn't an outhouse, it was actually a freshwater tank because it was so large that we had to build a little extra section onto the back of the building to cover yeah. the freshwater tank. And it took you, what, like two and a half hours to fill? It took a very long time. We had to use like a freshwater hose like you would for your RV. They make special hoses that are good for like drinking water. Um, and, and you literally buy, I think it is an RV hose, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. it's a freshwater, it's a white freshwater hose. You'd fill it up and then all of our water still had to, you know, even though it was fresh city water, it still had to run through the filtration system uh, to make sure that all of our water was absolute, the best we could make it because people don't think about it, but water is your main ingredient. Yeah, when you buy a coffee. coffee. Yeah. So you want to make sure the you have water, good water. The better the water, the better the coffee is going to taste. So that's most ideal to have the best water possible. Yep. Um, so yeah, so that's kind of like, I guess our experience with the tank system is we had one large freshwater tank and then we had multiple small gray water tanks. Um, again, our building didn't move. We were in the place and we were there to stay. Um, it wasn't permanent, but we just set it there and it stayed there for years. Yep. Yeah. And so technically, yeah, technically we were considered a temporary building because we were not hooked up to city services. We were hooked up to power. Um, however, if worst case scenario, we had to, we could call the power company and say, hey, I need you to unhook us. And we could have someone pick up our building and we would be out within hours. And so that's what qualified us as a temporary building. But to the general customer, we didn't necessarily look like we were a mobile establishment because we were skirted and it looked like we were there to stay. So um, kind of a benefit for us in the fact that we didn't pay as much as a permanent structure to build what we had, um, but then obviously downsides, lots and lots of downsides. Um, the tank system being probably one of the number one things that we had to deal with. Um, yeah. It was not great, but it was doable. And so power wasn't yeah. a big deal for us because we put our temporary building next to power. Mm -hmm. And although we weren't able to just hook up to the power line that was right there, we had to trench over, but it was the same power set of power power lines. Um, so we've talked about that in other videos, how we thought, well, you know, we're right next to a power pole with power lines on it. They can just plug right into it. That is not the way it works. Lesson uh, learned. <laughs> we had to go trench and go down to a transformer and do all that. So it cost us a lot more than we planned on. But needless to say, we had all the power we could ever want. And since we weren't moving, they could they could do a permanent hookup with power like they would to your house or anything like that. So that is something to keep in mind. Um, but if you're doing a trailer or truck, most places probably won't allow you to hook up to a permanent power because they don't want you to accidentally drive off and rip the power 
finds out. So yeah. uh, unfortunately, it's not just a plug-in deal. But you could, you could, however, possibly run a uh, a, a high-powered um, station, if you will, or a, a mini, a small pole that would have a dedicated plug just for you. Uh, like you would see at an RV park, every every spot where the RVs are, if they have power, each one has their own power plug-in. You could have the power company install one of those for you, or an electrician with the power company. And they put a meter on it, um, they put a breaker panel box on it, and you could do that if you were planning on going to the same spot every, every day you were gonna work. Um, a lot of people like to bounce around kind of mixed thoughts on that. I personally think that with coffee, you want to stay in one location as much as possible. Uh, it's it's something that, you know, as humans, we are creatures of habit. We wake up, we want to get ready. We drive to work every day the same way. We usually don't take a different route or anything like that. Um, and we, you know, we like to get our, get a routine of getting a coffee maybe every morning. So if they drive by, they're looking forward to it and you're not there and you're on some other spot, you know, you have people, people are never going to get into a pattern. So that's just something to keep in mind kind of on a side note. Um, another big issue that we ran into was storage with a truck or trailer or a very small temporary building. You don't have much room. You don't have much room it's like for... your, it's like your house closet like can a closet ever really be big enough i mean my God. <laughs> i mean you I mean, can, I don't know how long your whole house could be a, okay i guess more for women or men who are into fashion but i yeah. feel like there is just never quite enough room and then you build a big old closet and you're like or a kitchen and you're like this is it i've got it all and it's full i <laughs> don't know how but you're like what did i do uh, cups like boxes of cups take up take up a ton of space syrups sauces chocolate sauce white chocolate sauce caramel sauce uh, lids just everything that it takes I mean refrigeration it milk goes quickly whip all cream. the space I goes mean, quickly yeah it's never big enough so when it out go bigger <laughs> but, when possible yeah um, and I think it, that kind of like full circle here goes back to what is your target market what is your ideal customer base are you just hoping to do like soccer games on a Saturday morning? And, Maybe a wedding. Yeah, a wedding, um, a farmer's market, you know, where you don't ideally need to have a ton of storage. You're just there for a few hours. You know, you hope to do it every Saturday. You move it there and you get it done. Um, you only need to fill it up for what you need for that day. Or is this like a full-time business for you like it was for us? See, the issue that we ran into is we wanted to take a small temporary structure and we wanted it to be an everyday business of 14 hours a day, seven days a week. And, and we so, were all in. This yeah, wasn't a part-time gig for us. This was our the whole business. And so it was like trying to run a Starbucks in a 10 foot by 10 foot shed. And we lived in the middle of nowhere, as I like to say, where our nearest supply shop for everything that we needed to run our business was an hour drive away. And so it just presented some challenges. Obviously not impossible, we made it work, but it definitely presented some challenges where people who were running it more part-time, you know, had more flexibility. Or if you live in a bigger city where you have, um, for us, you know, it's called cash and carry or URM or a restaurant supply. If you have one of those near you where it's just a 10 minute drive, 20 minute drive, that's awesome because you don't need to buy as much supplies as we had to buy in order to sustain a daily business where we weren't constantly driving to go get supplies like we are right now. <laughs> yeah, that's actually what we're doing. Yeah. Um, yeah, and you can, depending on your situation or, I don't, you know, if you live in a, a small apartment in Manhattan, this would not be an option, but for us, we lived uh, in a full-size house with quite a bit of garage space. And so we were able to store a lot of our inventory in our garage. We literally, you guys, we joke and say that it was a mini Costco, but we bought the, they're called Gorilla Racks, and it's the same racks that you see when you walk into a shop like Costco. We bought those racks and we just put everything. Our racks were full. And so when the shop was low, we would fill up my car. And you know, I had a Jeep, thank goodness, that had a big old back space. And we would just fill up all the supplies 
and run them over to the shop and refill it. And we were doing that constantly until we have uh, decided to buy a shed, like a, they call them hickory sheds. It's just like an outdoor shed. We got permission from our landlord to add a shed to the back of the building. Um, it wasn't like at the, the building, the it was the back of the property. Yeah. And um, then we moved everything from our house over to the shed, which was wonderful because then, it gave us space. And then, and then what <laughs> happens? We're in Idaho. So most of our stuff is, it doesn't matter, like cups, they can get as cold as they want, right? Well, syrups, syrups will break. Bottles will break if they, they freeze. freeze. Oh, we experienced it actually. And so, um, I don't remember, it seems like the regular syrup didn't freeze. It was the sugar-free syrup that would freeze. I think we literally looked up like freezing temperature. I don't know if oh my gosh. <laughs> has this been something that anyone else has ever had to do in their life, but we one. were Googling like at what temperature does syrup freeze and well, we, that was we, part of our life. <laughs> yeah, we have like Red Bull. Red Bull would start breaking. Like they'd start, you know, when you have a can of soda or whatever, they, they freeze, they, oh, they break. They kind of explode. So... Then we did, but we didn't have electricity to our storage shed because it was like, why do we need electricity? We didn't really need, you know, we had. It was just a shed. It just was <laughs> a shed to hold the inventory. But then, so then I had to go buy a propane heater for those really cold nights. Luckily, I would say there was maybe only 15 to 20 nights out of the year that got really, really cold. And so I had to insulate it. It's I had funny to insulate going through the all these memories. <laughs> so I had to insulate the building, and then with propane, you don't need you don't need electricity. So we bought, I bought this like indoor safe propane heater with a thermostat, and I had this big tank that had to be outside, and I had to plumb the hose from the outside into the building. This like it was they call it a hundred pound cylinder, those big tall ones that hold like around twenty five gallons of propane. And I had to go over there and turn that on on the nights that would get below like 25 degrees. I'd have to go turn it on to keep, you know, just to keep things from, from freezing and exploding. It's, it's just amazing how much more work it takes when you don't have running water, when you don't have, when you're not hooked up to a, a sewer system or a septic system. Or power. When you, when you don't have electricity that is just unlimited. Uh, it's it's really it's like hard. we were you know, there's a term people like to talk about for businesses, but we were married to our business in the sense that like that, what were we going to do if we went on a vacation in the winter, which, you know, we tried to have a normal life back then, but it was tough. Oh, I mean, we leave town for a weekend. It was like, okay, I need you to go We're over. calling our friends that are not related to the business at all. Just like true just Casey friends. and Marie's friends. And we're like, hey, can we show you how to turn on this propane heater? And can we rely on you for the weekend? We'll give you free coffee. And then we tell our employees, here's the code to our garage door. Can you guys go over and grab the supplies that you, you know, every night when you would close, they had to make a list of what they needed. Well, then they'd have to go give that list to whoever opened and whoever opened on their way to work would go over to our house, open the garage, <laughs> grab the supplies, put it in their car, drive it over, unload it. It was a It nightmare. wasn't great. And that's why like we try to it's give hard. you guys these tips because I don't know if this is stuff that people think about before they open their business. I don't think they ever think my garage, I'm not going to be able to park in it because I'm going to dedicate it to my coffee shop and I I'm going to have to have people coming over to my house like I mean employees aren't strangers but at the same time like we're inviting them to our personal house to come get all these supplies from our house and it just it was so much okay to, and then yeah. Casey but just brought up a great point talking about all this like freezing stuff let's actually talk about that for just a sec because obviously every part of the world you guys are going to have different temperatures um and so not only did we have to worry about our temporary building with the, the shed for our supplies, we also had to worry about heat and cooling for our actual building. Um, and that... <laughs> well, we had electricity. Yeah. So we have, we have electricity to, our, to, the, to the original little coffee shack that we had. So we had a ductless mini split unit, which is air conditioning and heating both. However, in Idaho, in the wintertime, it can get below zero Fahrenheit, and it can go above 100 degrees Fahrenheit. In the summer. In the summer. So we have over 100 degrees. all four degrees. seasons. <laughs> so, so you have to have stuff. And then we have an ice maker, which 
has a compressor. It's air cooled, so it, you know when you you feel like uh, you know whoever you know. I don't know if any of you have experience with with things like that, refrigerators, things like that. To keep things cold, they produce heat. So like the ice maker has a big fan on it and it blows heat while it's making your ice. It like takes in cold air and in turn, well, it takes in room temp air. Yeah, and, and then in turn makes runs the it ice through. and produces hot air, which is great for the winter. Like we actually loved it. It was like a free heat source. If you were yeah. cold, you could go stand by the ice maker. But, but in, in the, the summer, <laughs> well, even in like the fall, we would have to run our if the low, like let's say the low at. Uh, let's say the low is, well even right now, the low is like 35 degrees. We run our air conditioner in our coffee shop year round. Pretty much, yeah. Even if it's... Except the dead of winter when it's really But I cold. mean, even when it's like 35 degrees at night, we're still running it because everything in the coffee shop stays on all night. Like your ice maker is producing ice all night while you sleep because you used up all your ice throughout the day. So it's just running all night. And you have an espresso machine. You know, you, some people may not know this, but you just leave them on. You don't turn them off. You don't unplug them every night. They stay on always, forever. Yeah. Unless it breaks. It's like your hot tub. Uh, well, I guess hot tubs are changing. I didn't know this, but I guess back in the day, you know, if you had a hot tub and if you wanted to use it, you wouldn't go out there and plug it in and let it heat up because it would actually cost you more and it takes so much longer for it to heat up for that one use than it would be to just leave your hot tub on. You might turn it down a little bit. You don't do that with your espresso machine, but yeah. you know, so it's it's very similar to a hot tub in that sense. That's where if you were, you know, doing a, um, like an event, if you wanted to do an event with your, your trailer, I am just blown away. I've never seen this line so long. It like took, took my words out of my mouth ever. <laughs> Traffic is getting crazy. Um, but if you were doing like an event, you would have to get there early to turn on your espresso machine to let it heat up and get ready. So that's just like a whole different thing. But just like Casey said, like it produced so much heat that I mean, you needed cool air almost always. It still does. I mean, if you, you guys would be amazed. It was like, I'd walk, like I'd be wearing a sweatshirt or a jacket. I'd walk into the coffee shop and if they accidentally turned off the air conditioner, We've been closed for maybe like an hour or two. I'd walk in there, it would be like 105, 110 degrees inside the coffee shop. Like, and then you our ice breathe. maker it so hot. wouldn't make ice because it needed cool air to create ice. So then we were running into this issue where we're like, what is wrong with our ice maker? Is it broken? It wasn't broken. It was the fact that it we needs had cool too hot of air. So keep these things in mind because a lot of people think well I'll just get a little air conditioner up on top well that's great like if you're in if you're in Seattle or Portland or somewhere with a more like mild yeah more climate. mild climate then you may not need much of an air conditioner or if you're in Minnesota you're gonna need a lot of heat in the winter time yeah and that you know that brings up another point too is where are you going to put your truck or trailer if you live in climates that freeze. So if you're in Florida, you don't need to worry about this. Hey, they did get some cold temps this year. Yeah, but not <laughs> enough to like probably freeze and break your pipes. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So if you're in Minnesota, Idaho, I mean- Colorado. Most places yeah. in the country get freezing temperatures. So if you have a big heated shop that every night you can park it in, well, that's great. Most people won't, don't have that access. So most people are gonna park their food truck or coffee truck, coffee trailer outside of their house or or maybe they'll leave it parked somewhere outside and what, you know, how are you going to keep your espresso machine, um, you know, obviously if it stays plugged in always to power, that, you know, that is a big problem with, with having a generator because if you have a coffee trailer or a coffee truck, you will be turning off your espresso machine every night. Yeah. Because you have, no you have a generator. So we were hooked up to power, so so we didn't do that. Um, but you know, in, in that instance, like your your espresso machine isn't is going to break if it freezes. The water and it's bad. I've seen boilers that that burst when uh, when temperature when it freezes. Um, because like what, thousands of dollars. I guess what you're trying to say is when you turn off the machine, it's not like it drains the water. Actually, water stays in your boilers. Mm -hmm. So that's where he's saying that if you if it freezes 
you're screwed because it mm -hmm. the water is already in there so and even pipes. we keep backup machines um, at our house in case one of our machines were to go out at our shops we have two backups in our garage right now um, we have to make sure that those machines don't get too cold so actually you'll see in the winter it's kind of comical we'll like open the garage and we'll run inside and then we'll shut it as fast as we can um, and we're like kind of crazy about making sure the garage is closed because those machines we don't want to freeze like we have to be so careful or else it's thousands of dollars to replace the boilers in the system mm -hmm. so and time too and your pipes like you have pipes from your water tanks to your from your pump to your sink to your ice maker or whatever else you have water to um it's just like a camp trailer you know you have to winterize your camp trailer in the winter time uh same would go for this but if you're going to be open in the winter time like a lot of people are then you might need to run a heater when you get home you might have to like put a heater in your trailer and let it run all night like plug it in or um or plug the trailer in if you could at night something like that which obviously would be expensive if you're only doing like weekend events yeah things so. to consider i don't it's funny because it's not that some things people don't think about and other things they do think about but they don't think it will be that big of a deal and it a lot of it ends up being a really big deal that's what happened to us i was like well filling the water tank you know once a week isn't that big of a deal it is a big deal when you have to do it every single week and you're sitting there for hours <laughs> unraveling a hose and and put, you know filling it up it, it, it is a big pain mine um, has the gray water Ooh. emptying those gray water it was tanks embarrassing to have employees like i understand it's part of our journey and i'm so glad we went through the process where where we're at right now you know there was a reason for our journey but mm -hmm. having employees and having to be like okay so here's these gray water tanks and you have to replace them and you got to keep an eye on them or it's going to overflow and get in your shoes and it's like nasty gray water and gray water is not cute it's brown it's yeah, gross it's basically, <laughs> basically it's your like it's your sink water so like yeah. whenever you'd pour espresso shots down the drain because maybe they they weren't good or if you poured some Oh, extra milk and it's yeah. just a montage of nastiness. Yeah, I mean it's it is it is not good. I mean it's just not a glamorous life, and it does cost a lot more to do like tanks underneath. Um, and a lot of people don't like, including myself. I don't know how to plumb or to attach tanks under a trailer, so I'd be paying someone to do that, and I would be trying to get as big of tanks as possible. So then, then you start thinking about, well, how big is my trailer? Well, let's say it's 20 foot. Okay, well, how much is all the equipment in there? How do I keep all my equipment from when I turn, you know, make sure your express machine doesn't fall off the counter and break and fall onto the floor. I mean, these things weigh 150 plus pounds. Um, you know, not only all that, how much does your trailer weigh with all of your equipment? What is the trailer rated at? And you have equipment, you have supplies, and now you've hooked these big water tanks underneath your trailer. And let's say, let's say it holds a hundred pounds or a hundred gallons of water. Well, a hundred gallons of water weighs about 800 pounds. So a hundred gallons of water, I mean, it's not a, not a ton, uh, but these are the things that people have got to think about. And then they got to think, what kind of vehicle do you have? Well, her little Jeep that she had would not be able to pull a 20 foot trailer fully loaded with water and all that weight in it i mean there's no way it wouldn't be rated for it it wouldn't it wouldn't work so do you have a full-size pickup truck or suv that that has enough power and is rated to tow something like that and when you're looking at getting a trailer if that's the route you decide to go you need to make sure that you talk to the trailer manufacturing company and say this is what i want to do this is how much weight i want to put in it what's it rated for start start looking at all your equipment because an ice maker, you know, our ice maker holds like, I can't remember, a few hundred pounds of ice um, alone. We have a big one. But we have a big one, but our espresso you can get machine. Smaller ones. Um, then you have people inside of it. You know, you might have two or three people in there, and it all, it all adds up, and that trailer can only hold so much weight, and your vehicle can only tow so much weight. So, same thing if like, that in mind. you know, like one of the things that I think is so cool visually is when people take airstreams, like older airstreams, vintage ones, and, and redo them. Well, you might be thinking, well, perfect, it already has fresh water and gray water, which might be very sufficient for you, but how big are those tanks? Have you done that research yet? Um, you know, people always joke, like, growing up, we went camping a lot, and my dad was always like, take a shower, but make it the fastest shower of your life, or if you're going to wash your hands, you know, turn on the water, get them wet, 
then turn it off. Put soap on your hands, then turn the water back on. Rinse them and then turn it back off. So you had to learn to preserve water. And that was difficult with hiring new employees because we all get in the mindset, you forget that the water is not endless. It's like you have yeah. to budget your water system. And so it just, it's a learning process. Um, Those older it, trailers too, like the Airstreams, they're really cool. I watched a lot of people convert old camp trailers into food trailers or coffee trailers. They're super cool. However, how many axles do they have? How many, you know, is it a dual axle with four tires? And how much weight can that trailer hold or withstand? Because a camp trailer, when you go inside of a camp trailer, there's a reason why everything is so light. The mm -hmm. cabinetry is particle board. I mean, everything is like paneling. It's not, you know, that's the reason. It's because it can only hold so much weight in there. And so your equipment, and when you change the purpose of this is a camper that we just sleep in and we drive down the road and you know camp at different spots now you're turning it into i'm going to be putting two or three people in here all day long on the floor and on top of that i'm going to add all this equipment and inventory you need to make sure that it can handle it and uh people have definitely run into that mistake too where they start loading it up and they go outside and they're like or, you know the tires are like touching the fenders because it's completely <laughs> the suspension or the springs on the trailer are just completely maxed out um that'd be an expensive mistake yeah and, and moving weight too i mean you know as as most of you probably know when you tow trailers if you put too much weight over the tongue or too much weight toward the back the trailer can you know swap around and things like that so different things to keep in mind a lot of people overlook them um a lot of people think they can just do whatever we thought that in the beginning yeah um, and when you <laughs> yeah. think that well that wouldn't be that hard that'd be pretty easy think about doing it for years on end and if this is gonna be something that you do full-time you've got to think about that because you're gonna get very tired of it and when you leave town if you want to stay you know if you want to leave town for four or five days who's gonna be doing this for you and and is that what you want you know we yeah. we did it for two years that was enough <laughs> there's a reason we replaced <clears throat> our building and hooked up to city water and sewer there's a reason yes. why we said we don't care if we don't take a dime out of this business because our first priority right now is mm -hmm. getting this fixed first thing we did we, well, we, we had a bathroom <laughs> for the first time <laughs> I we had a bathroom the toilet and i think i teared up <laughs> and i i went into the sink and like we have a three compartment sink and i just turned on the water and i just let it run without like panicking I'm sure there was a part inside of you that was like twitching. Well, it was just like, weird. Ugh. It was so weird because we'd like turn on the water, get your hands wet, turn it off. You know, like anyone... you're always yelling. I mean, I feel like a jerk now, but we were always like, water, 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 water. Like, turn it off. It was so precious. Oh, you never savored running water and so much. When in you your have life. to carry the gray water tanks, yes. You think when that water is running, oh, it's like you can hear the water running, and it's just piling up in your mind like i'm gonna have to haul that water and the longer it runs the heavier it is and water's not light no no we no, all no. know that and well, gray that's... water is definitely not light it's yeah. a little heavier too so so i guess like yeah a quick thing to go back to the beginning <laughs> we do this a lot we're good at this um to go back to the, the beginning people seem to think it's informative I hope. I hope you guys love these. We do kind of go off tangent and ramble. <laughs> <they do. laughs> but that's why they're called rumble strip rambles because we're rambling. We are. But okay, to go back to the beginning really quick. Please do yourself the favor and don't buy the generator and then buy the equipment after and hope it's going to work. Instead, do the reverse. Bef well, actually, the same no. but not. You need to figure out what equipment you want for your shop. And need and need yep make a list mm -hmm. literally if it takes power at all i'm talking the plug-in for your cell phone the plug-in for your ipad or your point of sale system lights lights the everything you need to make a list mm -hmm. and you need to calculate how much power that is going to take before you figure out what type of power source you're going to need um I understand that a lot of coffee shops make it work with a certain type of power source. That's amazing. But it didn't work for us because the espresso machine that we had and the ice maker we needed to be successful for the type of customers and the type of business we were going to run was not going to work with a small generator. It just mm -hmm. wasn't. Even a big generator. Yeah. I, I did the math. 
I needed like, I needed, I can't, I can't even remember. I remember the cost was about $15,000 for, and it might've been a dual generator system or it might've been just one big one. It was like to power a house. Uh, it wasn't a diesel. Yeah, when I was... told I told the the it was a it's a company here in Idaho that builds custom food trucks and food trailers, and I said, hey, I want to build a coffee trailer. We're looking at doing this. We want to take it to like farmers market, di you know, different events like that. And I told him, you know, power was a, a big issue of mine. He goes, well, I've never built a coffee trailer. We do lots of food trucks, uh, and so that this shouldn't be a problem at all. And I told him, I think it, I think the power thing will be difficult. And he said, oh no, we power these big food trucks and they don't have a problem with it. I don't think you will. Then I started telling him the equipment and I had to send him over, a, I sent him over an equipment list. So I wrote down every piece of equipment, the brand, the model, and then on the website of every piece of equipment, like our La Marzocco espresso machine that we wanted to put in there, it would say it does this many amps, it's this many volts. Um, it gave all the specs. I listed it all out and I said, this is everything I wanna put in there, including lights and, and everything like that. And he calls me and he's like, you gotta be kidding me. Like you guys use, you guys use more power than a typical house. And I'm like, yes, yes. we really do. <laughs> it's our, bad. our power bill is. Our house, crazy. our home power bill. We have a 3000 square foot house. We have a big house. Our, our house, our power bill is like in the dead heat of summer is like $140. Yeah, I was gonna say, I think the worst I've ever seen it was like a week where we were over a hundred every day and it maybe creeped up to 200. Yeah, maybe. That's a over a 3,000 square foot house. Our coffee shop, which is 12 <laughs> feet by 22 feet, with typical like eight foot ceilings. Like it's, it's Nothing tiny. Nothing special. <laughs> that power bill, 280 bucks a month minimum. Oh, it goes well like, over 300. I feel like the average I kept seeing when I was doing the check was 370. 350. <laughs> it becomes, $350. The espresso this is, machine itself takes so so much it's like running your house dryer your home dryer non-stop i mean it is a 220 that's the same plug-in that you need for your dryer it is like running your dryer non-stop yeah 24 and hours a things day. that heat thing things that heat things very hot like an espresso machine to boiling temperature constantly things that cool things <laughs> or trying to make very cold things like a refrigerator a freezer an ice maker AC unit. They suck power like you guys can't believe. And so uh, it is overlooked constantly. And we, we do talk to other people that do have food trucks, food trailers. Uh, we talked to one coffee trailer. She She's running a single group espresso machine, but has to wait for it to recover. Because, yep. you know, she gets busy. She makes She might make eight or 10 drinks real quick. And all of a sudden, the machine is like warming up. It can't. It has to refill and then reheat before she can do anything again. So it's. Yeah. I mean, imagine. You have to play this game of you, what, what is your target? Yeah. What it, how many customers are you trying to serve? What is your goal here? And then you have to decide, okay, listen, I can get away with a single group head. We, it's not quite here yet. And I'm so excited to show you guys when it gets here. But my birth or Christmas present from Casey was an espresso machine for our house. It is like a, it's considered a commercial machine, but it's also considered a home machine because it is a La Marzocco, a well, home Well, it's a model. commercial, no, it's not a home model. It's a commercial <laughs> single group <laughs> espresso machine that I am making Okay, but if you go on La Marzocco's model. website, I think it's under the like a La Marzocco home well, division. The, what they were able to do is with this specific machine, you can get it in 110 volt, which is like your typical outlet for your house or you could get it in 220. Oh, and good to know. That was the only, cause we don't have a 220 plug in our kitchen, right? That's like, <laughs> that's like for your dryer. So <laughs> just a casual dryer plug in the kitchen. Right, so that's why I went with it. And then, and then it also does have a water reservoir that you have to fill, or you can buy a kit that you can hook to your, like to your normal city water line in your house. Um, you'd plumb it, like if it's in your kitchen, you might, tee off of like your sink or something like that and you can the you can run or something like that you can run water that way um because see we've talked about that link if we were going to do a coffee trailer we would ideally probably use that we would have to figure out something because the power that we were going to use if we kept our system exactly what it is right now it would not work without power 
It just I would wouldn't. recommend a two group espresso machine always. Yeah. Even if you bought the nicest, fanciest single group. It I mean, think about it, you guys. If you guys are enough. you guys are at the fair and there's people in line that are trying to get like iced coffees or hot coffees, you know, maybe it's if you're at the fair, right? The kids are doing their 4-H deal and you've got parents there early in the morning like everyone wants an espresso drink and you're sitting there just constantly it's taking you forever and people you know people are leaving where i can pull i can pull a set of shots put it in and i can start a second set of shots and by the time i get it in there these ones are done yeah you know and it's it's twice as fast i don't know why you wouldn't i mean i would say yeah two groups pretty two perfect. group espresso machine that takes the least amount of have you power. looked how many amps i mean i ha i personally haven't so i can't tell you how many well, amps if you that keep two talking group. to them i will look it up. okay i can so look it up if you quick. okay so let's talk about like and this is getting long, so we'll, we'll finish and then we can go into Costco. But um, let's say that we wanted to modify the system we have now. So if we took the shop we have now, we wanted to modify it, but also we wanted to be able to serve the same amount of customers we serve right now. First, it would be impossible. But second, let's try our best. We would probably do a two group, depending on what you find out on that. Well, um, we would no matter what, we would get a generator big enough. We would, <laughs> we would, would have two buildings. One would be would, a generator. <laughs> yeah, and some people like a lot of these, a lot of these trailers don't have an ice maker because ice makers use a ton of water. They make ice and every time they're done making a sheet of ice, they spit whatever water was left out into, it's perfectly good water, I spits know. it right into your gray water tank. <laughs> and then it remakes another sheet of ice. So you just have fresh, basically, water. So most people, like, if this, is a, if this isn't, like, where you're going to be parked there every day and you're traveling to events and stuff, people will go buy ice. But where we live, I don't know about you guys, ice is $2 to $2.50 a bag. And we can go through 40 bags of ice in two oh, hours. Split like, a second. In the summertime, an hour and it's and gone. In, it's so expensive. For us in Idaho, like we have a lot of lakes and reservoirs near us and a lot of people love to recreational camp. There have been times where our ice maker was, so remember how we talked about how our one shop, it would get hot in there and then it wouldn't produce enough ice. We had an ice maker that we spent thousands of dollars on that wouldn't produce enough ice because we needed so much ice. So we would end up having to go to the store and buy ice anyways, even though we had this nice ice maker and power and everything mm -hmm. that we needed. And we were still buying the ice. Well, guys, there was times we'd go into the stores to buy the ice and they were out because in Idaho, ice is like <laughs> commodity, I guess. It's like gold. <laughs> so then we considered at one point literally having the you know when you go to like the grocery store and they have the ice outside and it's locked and you go inside and you buy it we literally thought about having to get one of those for ourselves you might actually depending on like your home situation like if you have a, a home with a with a garage you may have room to have a, an electrician and a plumber come in and plumb in an ice maker into your garage and then you you know you could you could just fill coolers up every day. I mean, that's a lot of work, but at least you're not buying ice. And at least then all of your ice that's at, because we've talked about that. If we were working like a yeah. farmer's market every Saturday, part of the job would be the person would get the, the coffee truck, drive over, park outside the coffee shop, and then they would grab, you know, um, those food safe ice buckets and they'd go inside our coffee shop, fill up ice, and then go dump them into an, an ice bin inside of the coffee truck or trailer. And then we would take that to the event because ice is so expensive. Um, Especially if you couldn't, if an ice maker wasn't going to fit your power grid, that's kind of your only option. Yeah, even a two group, a two group La Marzocco Linea, which we run three group La Marzocco Linea, is 30 amps. So even that, you know, $5,000 generator that has, you know, that Honda 7000, that big 300 pound generator, this would take up well over half of its capability of power. So you could run LED lighting, you could run your iPad, right? These things take minimal power, but a grinder, you know, to grind your espresso, like a commercial a commercial grinder like we run, yeah. I think they run like eight or 10 amps. What are they, Mazer? Mazer grinders? Yeah, I can look that up too real quick. Uh, but it just goes to show you guys how quick, you know, if that if that generator can only produce 50 amps of power max at one time, then your grinder and your espresso machine almost take, take up all your power. Thing. 
it's and that's just where, crazy. like, you it's have crazy. to limit yourself where, like, if you tried to, it might be possible, you would be using the crud out of it because you're pushing it to its limit. But then if you had the espresso machine going and the grinder going and then you ran over and started your blender, that might push it over. Yeah, you might start, you might start, you know, there'd Can be like, you a, like blow a fuse in the generator. Yeah, like generators have a load limit. So when they hit their load limit, like they, they you know, they'll have like a safety shutdown. But that's the last thing you want during a rush. Oh, in the middle got, with all those customers. Not to mention, cry. not to mention, right? You're in, you guys are in Nashville, Tennessee in the summer, which is, I, I mean, super hot. Yeah, we have so no humidity, so. <laughs> so you guys have your air conditioner just pumping. I don't even know what, like, how many air conditioning units. Like you look at those camp trailers, usually they'll have like two air conditioning units. It's, it's unreal. How many amps do those take? It's, a lot. They take a lot. You have to do, this is where we like encourage you to do the due diligence, mm -hmm. do the research before you start buying stuff. Don't start buying stuff. Don't start buying espresso machines and ice makers and all this until you've done the research and you know that your plan is feasible. And if you want help, that's what we're here for. <laughs> yeah, we're, we're that's always... That's why we're here is so we can help you guys and we can kind Gosh, of... We've had, we had, we've had multiple mentoring sessions where these people you know, they, they come to us for help and then they tell us like, okay, well, so we've done this, we bought this and we're like, we're like, pause, you've done what? <laughs> no, 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 no. Like I wish you would have. And then they more than us wish, right. They're like, I wish I would have done this mentoring session. Like pit in their stomach. Just, Cause it's not that it's too late, yeah. but it's too late for On some, some of things. the things. On yeah. some things they bought and they can't get returned. And it's like, they're like, well, I thought I needed this. And it's like, like maybe they thought they needed a three group big espresso machine for their little coffee trailer or something. And you're like, how are you gonna power that? Yeah. You know, and then every, you know, the ice makers, the air conditioner, the heater, the whatever else you're running. And unfortunately, you know, for heat, you can, you. you can run propane for heat if you have space on the outside of your trailer and it's plumbed for it. That's just for heat, you know, I don't... And then you have to go get propane and fill up your propane tanks. And now it's another thing that you're doing outside of the business. And all of a sudden, mm -hmm. you have a full-time job outside of your full-time job. I'm, I'm only finding, uh, I'm only finding watts. And I'm, oh. I'm not sure exactly how that conversion... See, this is, guys, this works. is why I have him. Because I, oh, I'm going to oh. be honest. I might have found something. I wouldn't know to think of all that stuff. And it's not that I'm, like dumb and you, if you're like sitting here panicking too listening to this video please don't think that you are either I didn't know about any of this stuff I don't know how he figured this out but this is where I so am grateful that he was like stop we need to figure this out before we got too far into it and I think that that's yeah. just kind of one of the things is you know I was so focused on menus and drink recipes and all of that I never would have known hey, you have to figure out power and it's going to be this situation or you need to figure out the size of your building or this is what kind of espresso machine you're going to need and why. Mm -hmm. And that's where I'm grateful that we have different skill sets coming into the business because we catch ourselves all the time where one of us thinks something's a great idea and the other one's like, can we talk about that for a minute? So yeah, uh, you can get, I think, a good average for grinder. You're going to be ranging from two to seven amps per grinder. And we run two grinders per espresso machine because we have a regular and we have a decaf. They're not always running at the same time, but they're plugged in all the time, so. Right, but you have to make sure, you know, that your your water pump, which is constantly running to your espresso machine and your grinders and your, whether you have an ice maker or not, your air conditioning, all these things that are, you need to make sure you have enough power for all of them to run at the exact same time. Just so you know you're not gonna have any issues. Yeah. Because you don't want to you don't want to play that game either like, oh, don't turn on that grinder until that turns off. Yeah. That would be <laughs> that would not Doable. be good. Doable, difficult. All right, yeah. officially our longest video yet. <sighs> Who would have thunk? Who would have thought? We honestly, we let us know in the comments if you've made it here to the end. I'm always I always love watching these you know, watch you guys comment. You're like, I made it the whole video. That's so cool to us. Like, yeah, thank you guys. It's cool you guys find It really means the world. You guys find value in in what we have to say and our experiences. Um, you know, we kind of feel like it's our way of like giving back to you guys. Although it's it's like it most, you know, you guys are strangers, but nobody yeah. helped us. And so we want to help other people live the dream of 
of and entrepreneurship. And not saying we have it perfect. And, we don't. No. Like, we will say that so many times because I don't want you guys to think that we just have it all figured out and we know it all. We don't. Mm -hmm. We don't. So, like, sometimes people in the comments say stuff and I'm like, wow, that's a really good point. And, like, never would have thought about that. So, I'm glad that you brought it up. Um, it's fun to see sometimes other, like, coffee trailers or um, coffee shops will comment or they'll comment, like, on our Instagram and stuff. And they're like, oh, made that mistake or, like learned this or they'll say you know we did it this way and it's like wow that's that's amazing i'm so glad yeah. that you guys are sharing your experience too i don't want you guys ever to watch the video and think like brian casey just know it all like no way no way yeah, we just and, share what we know we share our experience people that have food trucks if you have a food truck or a coffee truck coffee trailer if you have one comment let us know like are we are we in line with your experiences or maybe maybe there's something that you guys are like we do this and it you know, it would solve that problem and we're not thinking of it. Yeah. I mean, my wheels are always spinning because I'm always wanting to, to do a, you know, a full size mobile coffee shop. But gosh, every time I look at doing it, I think I'm going to have to be the one that does it all the time. We already have a lot of irons in the fire. So is someone going to come like pick up my diesel pickup and like hook up to the trailer and go drive it when I'm out of town to an event? I, that's, that tricky. alone is hard <laughs> and I have to teach people <laughs> teach people how to drive a trailer or oh. a, or a big a big coffee truck I still can't even back They're a like, trailer so it's not happening people buy these old UPS or FedEx trucks and turn them into coffee trucks those things are big and I don't I feel so, like I would be more comfortable driving that than I would pulling a trailer probably but so at least I could like back it up and yeah I'd put some backup cameras and stuff on <laughs> it but but then but then right a coffee trailer if your vehicle, like let's say the motor blew up, oh. you could just get another vehicle. You could borrow a vehicle. Yeah. You could probably go rent a vehicle and, and still stay in business. If you have a, a coffee truck and like, let's say your transmission goes out, I don't know, it could be weeks till they get that thing fi fixed. You're, you're, out of you're out of business for weeks. Yeah. Because you can't move it. So there's pros and cons to trailer versus truck. Yeah. Okay. Let us know in the comments. We've almost made it to an hour. 58 <laughs> minutes this and is 49 gonna take forever seconds. to upload. It's going to be wild. Yeah. Right now it is uh, It is Thursday, the 11th of March, 524 p.m. Mountain Standard Time. I bet, you, this, I bet you guys are going to be like, you guys are going to be watching this probably tomorrow, like early in the morning, like, oh, they uploaded another video. <laughs> it's like, going to take that long. <laughs> anyway, My thank you guys. Dead. Thank you guys yeah. for everything. Thanks for everything. Thanks for being such loyal followers. Please follow us on Instagram. We post... We post some pretty knowledgeable stuff, I think, on there. Um, podcast, I'd like to give you guys a little update. We are making some slight progress on that. If you count painting a room progress. And we have a desk. Uh, kind of. We bought a desk. We don't have chairs, but we bought a, a pod. <laughs> like, we bought a desk for it. And we got we have to get the camera. I'm getting some help with, with a guy. It's really expensive. And what sucks is that... Casey Scott, it is an hour long. What sucks is we don't make any money off of this, really. So, <laughs> okay, friends. We'll talk soon. <laughs> so we appreciate the support. <laughs> we'll be back. And we hope we help. My sweet husband loves to talk. Okay. Goodbye. Oh, look. Well, almost an hour. And an hour.